Welcome you to Toasted Soul. Toasted Soul is a podcast hosted by me, Greg Keen. Toasted Soul will be exploring technology news, business news, and just general rants on life. Let's get into it. Hey guys, welcome back to Toasted Soul. Today we have Ian Peters with us. Ian is a real estate agent, international real estate agent, uh, amazing hockey player, and uh, videographer. Ian, why don't you introduce yourself and tell the people a little bit about you. Thank you, thank you. Thank you for the intro, G. Greg, yeah, Ian Peters. I do real estate and relocation across the U.S., Canada, and Europe, namely New York, Florida, the Hamptons, Toronto, Canada, Berlin, and Prague, Czech Republic. Those are my bases, but I do cover each country respectively. Video production-wise, I own and operate Department of Media, it's a small video boutique production house out of Toronto, Canada. We service sports, fashion, film, TV, lifestyle, Uh, A lot of brand marketing, video stuff, and more recently, social media content for clients. My background, born and raised in Canada. As you said already, I play hockey a lot. (laughs) I'm a huge hockey nut. And yeah, I just love working with people, meeting people. I'm a huge networker, naturally. I've been very fortunate enough to spin that into my business. That's awesome, Ian. Yeah, I've known Ian for quite a while. One of the people that I met when I first moved to Toronto an amazing man, amazing person. Uh, so, Ian, what's been going on with you? Like, uh, I know right now you're you're enjoying the life sitting out there in a cottage in uh, in Las Vegas. Mm-hmm. I need it. I need to. It's been kind of crazy having to adjust the COVID, the lockdown, real estate market fluctuating heavily and quickly. Video production wise, things are starting to pick up again. I'm getting calls from clients for shoots, rebranding videos, post COVID videos. You know, instructing clients and employees of the new operations how to work in the new covid era i guess you could say getting hit with that a lot both in canada and the u.s and then uh getting set to go over to germany for a few months wow so what's it like traveling right now so i know you do a lot of traveling what's it like traveling right now amidst the, the covid scare what's it like traveling now during the covid scare i would say uh, a lot more cautiously and there is definitely uh, this heightened vibe of cleanliness especially as you go through the airports you know being having my forehead checked for temperature before i board and even after i board uh recently filling out long long ass forms where you're going to be who you're with who you've been in contact with in canada more so than the states i want to stress that canada has definitely been on, on the ball yeah. i've noticed so has europe been they've, they've been in the ball as well but, I think um, it's important, though. I, I think that's what's uh, stemming the growth in these countries is that, you know, they're on the ball. Whereas, like, in the States, it's like there's this thing to try to, like, hide it or cover it up or make it not seem like it's a real thing. And that's that. I think that's conducive to, like, the, the growth in the States. I agree. I mean, I don't know what's behind it. There's a million and one conspiracies. And I, I, I think this is definitely a, I don't know, convenient, inconvenient for somebody that somebody's leveraging this somewhere, I think. Uh, or I feel, but um, yeah, this is what a time, man. What a time. I don't know. Yeah, I, I personally think it's a, a political move. I mean, it, it's obvious. It is a it is an election year, and in election years, there's just it's it's insanity that what happens in an election year, especially with uh, with Trump. It's like he's you know like he's clearly told everybody like he doesn't want testing, and now they're sending the numbers directly to him. So it's like if a man says, I don't want to show the numbers out of testing, and now he's got control of the numbers, he's going to definitely hide it, right? Yeah, yeah. But yeah. again, what do we what do we know? By the time the media gets in and it gets to our ears, I mean, having worked in media myself for 20 plus years, and um, seeing what the actual story is versus what was put out by media, I, I have... Uh, <laughs> I have no doubt that the public is definitely shortened of certain information. Yeah, things can be spun easily via the media. 
Right. That that's so true. And we, we've seen that so many times in the past. So yeah, yeah, we don't we don't ever know. It's like there's lots of speculation, but uh at the end we we, we never really know because it's being controlled and being um, finessed by people who have a specific interest in their own interest, not really the public's interest. It's really sad because it's like you used to look towards the news as like the truth and yeah, the truth behind everything, but now it's not, it's not. Yeah. It's sad, man. It's sad. Yeah. I mean, I, it's caused some strife even within my own family, just like my mom and my sisters who are heavy news watchers and glued to the news 24 seven and you know, the hysteria of the news hits them. You feel it in the house, you know? I got to get out of the house now because I was in New York and I can't, they want to be around me and I can't touch nothing. Like, I understand all that, but the hysteria in which they approach it with is definitely fueled by the media they're ingesting. And it's so interesting to see it. And I can't tell them different. I don't want to tell them different. They are who they are. They're going to believe what they believe. But, you know, if the, if the media tells them to go jump off a cliff, they probably will go jump off a cliff. Yeah, that's unfortunate. It's unfortunate. Yeah. So yeah, what's going like with the uh, I you know I, I know you do the um, the relocation and and uh, you're like basically a jet setting, flying around the world, doing all kinds of crazy stuff. Could you uh, give us a little highlight on, on what that's about? In regards to me doing relocation and as you said, jet setting, I'm gonna have to say it's something that stemmed from again me being a natural networker. I went right. to school in the States, left Toronto, Canada, early 90s, went to school down there, uh, met some people. I did some modeling as well, too, and just contacts I stayed in touch with that allowed me to, when I moved back to New York five years ago, after being away from New York for a few years, I was able to call up some friends and say, hey, I'm moving back to New York with my then wife, and I'm you know looking for some work to do. One of the contacts who I reached out to was a gentleman that I had met many, many years ago, just out nightlife in New York City, he worked in real estate and said, hey, I think you'd be good at this real estate game. You've done a good job of staying in touch with me for 20 plus years. You're you know, a great networker, yada, 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 give it a try. So, hey, I'm new to New York, what else? Why not give it a try? So I gave it a try and sure enough, what started to happen was, actually it didn't happen right away. For the first year, not much happened. Once I got my real estate license and you know, I'm trying to get people in New York to buy and rent for me. And somewhere along the way, I was getting frustrated and went and got an executive coach to kind of help me out. And I'm just trying anything to see what could help me. And somewhere along the way, someone said to me, well, you're new to New York. Nobody knows you. Like people don't know you enough to spend that kind of money with you to buy something or rent from you at those, at those numbers. So you should change your narrative. So I quickly changed my narrative from, hey, I'm new in New York to, hey, I've been in and out of New York for 20 plus years. And I also opened up my marketing from just locally to the world, to telling my Toronto friends, hey, I'm in New York, I'm doing real estate, which at first I thought wouldn't make any sense because nobody I know in Toronto really is renting in New York City. Like, what would they care? Ignorant me, literally the second I put it on Facebook to my Toronto friends and my Canadian facing friends that I am doing real estate in New York, like I think within a minute, somebody pinged me DM and said, Hey, I'm actually moving to New York for this job. I just got, I need some help. Can you help me find a place? Wow. That's so, great. Uh, yeah. It, and that started to happen. I was a Toronto friend, Andrea, my first real relo client. And I should probably tell you this much. Here's how new I am. I was in the game. I didn't even know what I was doing was called relocation. Cause what I was doing was helping friends out from Toronto and from Canada, them or their spouse or their work associate find a place in New York and as well help them, you know, if it's the, if they're coming with a spouse, help their spouse get settled in. If they're coming with kids, help their kids get into school. That's just my nature. I like to help people out. And I was also recycling some of the services that were given to me when I moved there via my wife's company, a corporate company, which is a, a notable food company she came to do finance for. Part of her benefits was a support package for the spouse, spousal support package. So I literally had somebody come into the condo every day and teaching me about U.S. Uh, immigration, laws, rules, what, how the house works, how Washington works, and just teaching me all the nuances of the U.S., of being in the U.S. and being able to do business. They even helped me write a resume. Wow. So again, being the natural networker I am, I held on to those contacts and just kept emailing them, just saying, hey, hi, I'm doing fine, just giving them updates and trying this real estate game out. Here's what's going on. 
little did I know once my real estate game took off and I started helping my Canadian friends, I would actually end up needing those services. So one of the services I used was, a, I kept using a lot was a translation company. So I started dealing with people who happened to like, you know, learn or translate French or come from Europe and learn, you know, re relearn English because they're coming from Germany, et cetera. So I actually ended up just, like I said, recycling services that were given to me, people helping them get their driver's license converted from Canadian to American driver's license or New York driver's license. I had a lady help me out do that. And I actually, she, she ended up helping all my clients. So I quickly, what quickly happened was this business of helping people from Toronto come to the U.S., get settled in, and just make it easier for them to literally land on Friday and be at work Monday seamlessly, whether it be moving their stuff, getting it unboxed, packed, find them an apartment, all that stuff. Figure out what their local, you know, help them find a local dry cleaner or supermarket. And I would say one of the things that really helped me in this is knowing Toronto and knowing New York and being able to speak to an executive who's living in Toronto and young and let's say Young and St. Clair and say, oh, you like Young and St. Clair? You're probably going to like Upper East Side, New York. Or speaking to some, who would I brought over? I brought a sales kid over for Salesforce. He lived at, in, he lived, what was it called again? In Toronto, Kensington Market area. So I said, you're, if you like that, you're probably going to like Lower East Side of New York. Like being able to equate those areas on both sides of the border was definitely a clincher for clients coming on board with me because they really felt comfortable some of them was their first time in the U.S. I've never been there. I've never been in New York, sorry, for extended periods of time, let alone, you know, coming for work. So it instantly gave them comfort in knowing what they're stepping into or being able to articulate to me what area or what vibe they want. You know, Ian, I'm living in Kensington, but I want to feel like I'm living down on the waterfront of Toronto. Oh, in that case, you're probably going to like whatever, the financial district, it's the tip of, southern tip of Manhattan, you can see the Statue of Liberty, it's the waterfront, yada, yada, yada. Just making those. That's awesome. Comparisons. Yeah. It, yeah it, 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 and it's good that you lived in both places. And so you're able to like put that puzzle together for them because yeah, I would not like, I love my area. I live at Young and Edmonton. I wouldn't even know where in New York or, or wherever I'd want to move to because I'd, I'd still want this kind of vibe or this kind of uh, area. But uh, it's good that you know the area so well in both cities that you can say, hey, Greg, you like this area? Boom, I could throw, you know, you throw me in an area. It's like, this is perfect. This is just like where I lived. I love it. So that's a unique skill you got there. Thank you. Again, this is all discovery. It was all exploratory. I was literally learning on the go. But once I got the hang of it, I learned to leverage it because, again, my focus was on I'm in New York doing real estate. I got to find New York clients. And while I'm focused on that and nothing's happening, I kept getting these bings and tings and pings and emails and calls and texts from Canadians. Yeah. And I'm like, the bulk of my business at the end of the second year was that. I'm like, I can't ignore that anymore. I need to answer to that. And that's when I quickly set up my Ian Peters agency and went full. I learned what it was, relocation services. Relocation support is what I was actually doing. Little did I know. To me, in my head, I'm just helping a friend out. I know you for being that kind of person. Like you, like Ian knows everybody. Like when you're here in Toronto, we were hanging out. You know, I used to say one thing. It's like, oh, I got, an, I know a guy or I know a person. And boom, he could set you up easy. Like, I remember that. That's definitely you, man. Yeah, like I said, I'm lucky to have these 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 traits about myself that benefit my business and benefit my bottom line, and just work with what I'm doing. So it never really feels like work. Like I said, I was never putting it in the category of relocation services. I was just helping a friend out. But once I learned, once I learned what it was, I quickly, um, you know, centralized myself, got the website going, partnered up with all the vendors, let them know, you know, I taken a cut from the top. Am I just going to refer you? You'll pay me later. Whatever it might be, made my business, you know, deals with each person, and away we went. Yeah, yeah, that's that's great that you're. I mean, I mean, you have that hustle in you, so I know no matter where someone drops you, you're gonna be able to uh, survive and and make it. <laughs> you have uh, you mentioned the um, your media company. I, I remember the media company. It was an amazing company you had when you were here in Toronto. How's that going? Like, are you still? You said you're still doing like social media stuff and videos still. Still doing it. I was doing it on. The, so, so to answer your question about how my media company, Department of Media, is doing and where it's at, I'm still doing it. I had kind of muted it publicly when I was doing real estate because as I got real estate going, I didn't want my real estate clients worried about my 
focus, you know, and the questioning, is this guy my realtor or is he a video producer? Which one? And that was just the fear I had of like somebody not understanding that I could do both. And plus I need to give myself that time to learn real estate and learn, you know, build rapports, build networks and learn uh, the business. And I would say as of la early last year, when I felt confident enough to say, I, I know the business, I know where I'm going, I know what I'm doing now. Let me relaunch Department of Media, my production company, officially in the five years that I've been in New York. Like I said, I muted it, but I was still doing some smaller jobs because when I got to New York and while I was still discovering what I'm going to do in New York, I reached back to my Toronto network and said, hey, and I knew this from experience and being doing video myself and needing somebody to shoot something for you in another country or having to do a, sh a travel shoot. I reached back to my Toronto network of vendors and fellow production companies and said, hey, I'm in New York City. You know, in my head, I'm thinking they already know I have their trust and they have my trust. I'm in New York City, if you have any productions here you need help with, I'd be happy to help you. Sure enough, boom, same thing. People are hitting me back. Hey, we actually have a music video that needs to be shot in Brooklyn next month. Or actually, I might need you in, in August, in summer, they said, the first client I had, I did. And they wanted a music video shot in Brooklyn. So long story short, I ended up being their scout. I went to Brooklyn, scouted locations for them. I ended up being an on-the-ground producer for them, producing the shoot, finding a venue to shoot in. And it saved them, you know, having to send somebody or deal with people they don't know and, you know, take out the fear of, or remove the fear of, am I being hustled? It's America. I don't know different. I don't, I don't know what's what. So it was just the comfort level of doing business like we did together back in Toronto, except I'm on the other side. I'm on the border, other side of the border. And again, I know what they're looking for. Or we've done business together. or We've done shoots together. I know the quality they want, they expect. So one of the first things I did when I got to New York, again, thinking, I don't know what I'm going to do, but let me at least work on my video production company. I put ads in Craigslist another video trade ad saying, hey, I'm a new producer in town. I'm looking to meet with fellow creatives. So I basically take probably two to three days a week. I would take, let's say, two to five different creatives, respectively, for coffee, sit down, talk to them. What do you do? Or your graphic designer or your producer or what do you, you know, your shooter. And just weed out who was who, who was good, who was not. Look at portfolios. And... I think after the first year of being there, I had a small short list of like serious people. Even when I went to baseball games at Yankee Stadium, I'd meet the camera guy, I'd talk to him while he's running around in the stands. Hey, I'm from Toronto. I, I did what you did in, in Toronto for the Blue Jays. You know, I'm launching a production company here. I might need you. And sure enough, he gives me his contact. I ended up hiring that guy for like two jobs. <laughs> like I ended up, yeah, I ended up with a short list of really highly qualified, highly experienced creatives that, I just, man, you know, Gene, once you work with professionals that know what they're doing, it makes what you're doing so much easier. Right. And that's what I did. And I did at least four or five jobs production wise under the guise of department of media while I was in New York, still learning, the, still learning my real estate stuff. still studying, still learning the business. And um, once the relocation stuff took off, I kind of put video down a little bit. And to return back to what I was saying a minute ago, as of about a year ago, the itch came back. The itch said, hey, you know, video is your passion. Get back to it. So I got back to it. And then during this COVID lockdown, it gave me a lot more time to really hunker down on relaunching it, the logo, get the website in order, and reach out to my vendors, let them know I'm back in the game, and we approach clients. And now I'm busy again with video. Right, right. <laughs> and, I, and I love it. I guess you would say that networking is what really pays off. It, it seems like the fact that you have such a great ability to keep contact with people and to connect the right people in the right situations. Would you say that's that's part of what's the drive towards, I guess, the success that you're, you're seeing all the time? Would I say networking is the driver to my success? Yeah, like the, yes. key, the key thing, yeah. Yes, I would say in my line of business, which is, you know, keep in mind, uh, real estate and video are two different things. Relocation and real estate is very transactional. Video production's a bit different in that you're a bit more intimate. Well, not all the time, but um, with teams of people that are working towards the same goal, you know, a lot of creative is shared, which is, you know, 
uh, it could be an ego thing for certain people. Certain people are very sensitive about sharing the creative, but you're dealing with a lot more egos and um, personalities in the video and entertainment world versus real estate, which is again, more transactional. They come to you, they want a house, you got it for them. There you go, bye. Um, networking for me has fueled both those businesses, yes. Has it been the key? It's definitely been a key in the video side, networking and staying in touch with people and knowing where they are, knowing that, you know, today you're an editor, whatever, at Acme Films, and then tomorrow you're an editor or maybe you're a director over at Netflix. Like keeping tabs, as I call it, on where my um, resources are and what they're up to. So networking comes in there. Real estate wise, how do you go ahead. Keep tabs? Like, how do you keep tabs? Like, how do you keep a network? Like, I'm I'm horrible at networking. I meet lots of amazing people all the time, and is I find it so difficult to maintain those relationships. How do I keep those tabs? I'm gonna say, it's not something I um. I'm learning. It's an extension of my personality. I'm learning. I'm I'm, I'm very. The word I want to say. I'm just a, a people person. I want to know what you're up to. I sincerely want to know what you're up to. And I'm not, it's not the goal isn't to know what you're up to, to know how I could put it into play. No, just what are you up to? Like what's what's driving you today? Gee, oh, you got this new web show, podcast, and it's good to know because I might meet a client tomorrow who's again, I'm not saying I'm not saying I want to know what you're doing for my own purposes. I want to know what drives you. But what tends to happen for me is I might meet someone tomorrow who's coming out with some fabulous product or something, and I'm gonna say, Oh. You know what? Let me call my boy Greg and see if I can get you on this show. It might actually help you launch your product. Yeah, and that's that's my nature. That's an, that's the end that I know. It's like it's not that you're doing it for yourself. It's that you are you're giving back and like, hey, I know this person, and you guys can connect. It's, it, it, from from what I've known about Ian, is like I don't see that Ian is like directly going out there like oh if i connect these two people i get something from it it's like no these two people should meet because they are they can work some synergy when you do that kind of thing on a whole no matter who you are you actually get back whether the getting back is like the feeling of like you know i've connected these two people and they're working great together and they're happy together or i've connected these two people and i got this the the, the got this is just a bonus if anything or just like it's an incidental and it's not i don't think it's what you or from what I've seen you, it's not what you go after. It's like you go for connecting two people that need to be connected. You nailed it, Greg. I, I go after it for that. Those people need to meet. Like, I feel like I'm holding on to, it's like almost like a magnet. I'm holding on to a plus in this hand. I'm holding on to the negative this side of a magnet. Like these two need to come together. Expect nothing. The greatest joy is sure. At the incidental, when it comes back to me, like, ugh can't tell you how many times and how many ways the joys of connecting people have come back to me whether it be turning on the radio and hearing you know this new song from greg produced by so-and-so and i say to myself that's interesting i remember introducing greg to that producer at my party or coming back home to toronto and hearing about a friend's new business that they started in there i can't even think right now they're making athletic shorts and you know, oh, actually, I got that. the recent one was a friend of mine who wanted to write a book, and her book is out now. And I introduced her to the writer years ago, and little did I know they've been working on the book together all these years. I didn't even know they were even still in touch. And her book came out, and it was written by the writer that I introduced her to. And that, for me, is a joy in seeing that I can personally feel I had a hand in that. I'm not asking for credit. I'm not looking for it. I don't need to address it with anybody but myself, but just knowing that that's cool. I just, I just get off on that. I don't know what to tell you. <laughs> That's awesome, man. I think more people need to be like that. I try, but I'm like, I'm more of a, an introvert. So I, I, the people and the people I meet are more like, uh, more techie, like super nerdy computer people. So it's like, I don't really have that opportunity. I don't, I don't have the skill that you have for sure. I know you got to go in, but uh, no rush. I have uh, I have a few questions I wanted to make sure I get in before uh, before you have to take off and enjoy the nice weather out there in uh, Wasega Beach. <laughs> so I, I, we kind of covered these, I think, in a in a way by uh, the questions and the thing, the conversation that we've had so far. But I want to know, like, just really quickly, what is what is your passion? What is my passion? 
uh, before I answer that question, I'm going to get back to something you just reminded me of the word I was looking for. I'm very extroverted. I'm not very, but I'm an extrovert, as you yeah, know. Yeah, sure. I know that. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I'm very expressive. That's what I was looking to say earlier. I like to express ideas, uh, introduce ideals, introduce, hey, you should meet my buddy Greg. Do you think you know he's got a show? Maybe he could help your product. I like to introduce ideals and thoughts and share them and let's discuss them and you know dissect them. That was that. Back to your question, what is my passion? I'm gonna honestly say right now, I'm kind of figuring that out. I know for sure having the video production thing, you know, literally tap at me and say, hey, like you need to get back to this because not only do you want to do it and it brought you much joy for over like 18 plus years, I look at it, not a, not a single day felt like work, G. I would do video shoots for a week long. I might even eat one meal and sleep for one hour and I wouldn't even complain. Right. Never, I, you look back and like, wow, I, whatever. We've traveled through the trenches of Africa to do this or shoot that and shitty conditions and never complained. Yeah. Um, I think that's what it is, right? It's doing something you love so much that life just blurs around you and nothing matters but this one thing. And like, the projects that I'm working on, that is what I feel like that's, you know, I can just get up and start working on my project and like literally the world just melts away and this is what my focus is and this is what my love is and nothing matters. That, yeah. that to me spells passion. Yeah. Um, two things come to mind as well. We speak about what's your passion is a meme I read, someone came up randomly in my IG feed and I screen capped it and I use it a lot. I think it's something, it was, a, it was a meme to the effect of write down the things that make you happy, write down the things you do every day, write down the things that make you happy, and then adjust accordingly. For some reason, yeah. that really resonated with me. Yeah. Um, and then what was the other thing about passion and, and just saying, feeling like I never felt like work was when I transitioned from production to real estate, and realize now I need to go and I need to get up in the morning, shower, get dressed, go into an office, open a computer and start emailing people. That to me felt like work. Yeah. And I was like, bleh. <laughs> uh, <laughs> because, oh, I know I was gonna say too after that. Um, because production to me never felt like that. I, I realized I, I was very blessed. I realized I was very fortunate to have this career. My first job I go into where it just worked out because even when production started, I ran around with the camera in Toronto shooting every hip hop show I can get to again for my own doing and enjoyment. Actually, I didn't tell you that before. It was all when I started shooting, which was me and a camera that a friend had actually left at my place and I was taking it to hip hop shows. Was that the Canon? School. Was that a Canon? The Canon X. I totally one. remember that shit. <laughs> I remember that. The shit. red Canon camera. You remember that? That was good, yeah. G. I wow, so far we go back? Wow. Dude, come on. We go back to like 90 what? 96 maybe? 94? Yeah. I know, but just to fathom right now that the 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 like just to make those parallels of you and knowing what that camera and me just really dated. I remember everything. coming up, dude, I remember coming to uh out by Dan Forth to pick you up. I think you were at a class for videography or something. I took my first editing course at 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 uh what school is that called again? The Dan Forth. The tech school Centennial has a has a campus out there for tech, and I took a one on one in editing because I shot so much stuff prior to that, and I was giving people raw content. I was just showing friends raw footage. Like you should edit that. I didn't know how to edit at the time, and I remember at one point editing I was actually editing. Hard as hell, dude! It is until you. It, it, it is and it isn't. It, it is until you know what you want to say. When you know your story, you'll know where to put things, and you'll just get it done. Yeah. Editing is hard if you go into the bay and don't know what you want to do because it's infinite possibilities. Yeah, editing can be difficult, but once I learned basic one-on-one -on -one editing, not to say I was an editor right away, but at least it, it allowed me, the course allowed me to now speak the editing jargon with editors. I was now able to hop into an editing suite with editors and tell them what I want, how I want it, put a fade here, blur this, that, you know, drop a shadow on this font here. I was able to I no longer felt like I was at the whim of like just giving somebody my raw footage and I'll take back whatever they give me. I was able to now like know what the possibilities are and articulate them to the editor. Until then, of course, I purchased my own Final Cut Pro editing suite and started to edit myself. 
And then from editing, I became a producer, was just producing shoots, which was kind of fun for me. And that once I started producing shoots, both photo and video shoots, as I don't think I mentioned this, but I was a professional model prior to doing video production. That's how I kind of. Yeah, I remember that. Um, I remember you dragging me out to these model shoots. Greg, you're going to be good. <laughs> man. You'll be good. Uh, <laughs> uh, these editing, uh, the, sorry, the, the modeling shoots was fun. In yeah. the, my transition from modeling and acting into production uh, came full circle for me when I was producing shoots and I'm now holding castings in my own studio and models and fellow actors are showing up asking me, oh, you're here for the casting too, are you? And I would say, no, this is actually my casting. I'm actually casting it for the client. <laughs> and that's when it kind of hit me like, oh, I've kind of transitioned into something different. And that was pretty, uh, that was pretty fun for me, pretty cool for me. Again, I love, I love impressing myself. Gee, I ain't doing it for anybody else but myself. Just one-upping myself. How can I do better? Where can I go next? What's my next move? It's just, just that's just my inner dialogue. Yeah, we're we're but, definitely um, at that age, man. Yeah. Yeah. Got to do so, better. Huh? Yeah, exactly. We're at that age where you, you know and got to do better and always, you know, striving for the best. I wanted to ask you what makes you successful or what success is, but I think we covered that earlier. The last question I, I definitely want to ask is, you know, you're, you're a guy that's flying around the world and definitely have to keep in contact. So what I want to know is what technology do you carry every day? What's your everyday carry when it comes to tech? Like if I saw Ian on the street or I saw him at the airport and I'm like, okay, let me see your tech. What would you have on you? What tech would I have on me daily? My tech would be my Galaxy S9. I went Android because way back when it was time to make my first smartphone purchase, I was sitting in a car with my buddy Farai, who was a programmer. And I remember him saying this to me specifically. Because I was like, I was leaning towards iPhone like everybody else was. The iPhone 3 or 4, whatever it was at that time. He's like, go Android. You know, you can do so much more and get so much more open apps that you can modify and edit and and it's just more flexible. Something he said to me in however he said it, like, all right, I'll do Android. So I went to Android and I never looked back, which is funny because I have an Apple, at the time, an Apple computer. It was all Apple. And having to, like, get software that will translate the Android to my Apple was interesting, which Samsung did put out. Thank God. Shout out, shout out Samsung. Mm -hmm. But most recently, I just switched from Mac, from Apple to ThinkPad. I'm now on a Lenovo, or I guess will this be, yeah. X1 Lenovo. Oh, I had an X1. Um, yeah? Yeah, they're good. They're all right. They're all right. I'm just getting into its light. It's probably, as I was told, it's as fast as the Apple I was about to get because I just came off a MacBook Pro. So I'm yeah. coming out of Apple world into PC world, which is so new to me. I'm so used to just clicking on things, drag and drop. That isn't the case with PC, at least not yet. Yeah. <laughs> a lot of right, right clicks and all the yeah. options of what to do with it. But I'm trying to really get myself learning this the pc which is more for business more on real estate stuff but i'm sure i'll be back on a mac soon enough as i get my video stuff going again yeah or maybe dual carry like uh mac and the pc yeah yeah at one point i was carrying both computers yeah. to the office every day because i wasn't sure what i still need for my old computer but uh yeah so my tech right now i'm holding on to daily is definitely my lenovo thinkpad and my galaxy s9 no smart watches no smart watches Back in the day, I had the Palm Pilot. That was that was my thing. <laughs> I I was, yeah. Uh, yeah. No smartwatches. Maybe I'll look at getting one, but that's too much right now. I, I'm good enough for my laptop and phone. Yeah, I know you got to go. So I was just wondering um, if you could just give us some plugs so people can find you. I mean, like there are probably a lot of people that are listening that would need your services or just want to reach out and be uh, get inside your network because I know your network is vast and varying in, in different types of people. Um, so if you could give us some plugs where people can find you. Sure. Real estate relocation wise, if you're looking to travel, relocate, move, have somebody moved or even just explore a new city, I go by uh, progNYC.broker on Instagram. Okay. And my personal, my personal is relocating Ian on Instagram. Production-wise, if you're looking for video or digital assets, photo or video for social media, branding, marketing, lifestyle, sport, fashion, film, even documenting an event, etc. Department of Media, which is D-E-P-T, short form, of media.com. That's our website. That's pretty much it for now. That's it. When I post this podcast, I'll definitely put in the links and some 
ways to reach Ian and get his services. I know Ian's got to go, uh, but we're definitely going to have Ian back on here in the future. Ian, do you have anything else you want to leave out with? What I want to leave out with is a question you asked in the beginning. Uh, oh, in our oh, green room oh. chat was yeah. things to be so the, context. Yeah, so the question, so what Ian's talking about is that we have a little green room before we uh, actually get into the, the podcast. And uh, I was just telling him one of the questions I might ask him was, uh, say some shit that they're going to quote you out of context for when they come for you. Something I would say that I would think to say that will be taken out of context when they come for me, media-wise come for me, would be, I'm very thankful for this shitty situation. <laughs> And to break it down for you, what it means to me is I'm very thankful for shitty situation I've been in to be able to have the luxury of, of, of recognize them and knowing that I don't want to be in a situation again. I now, I might not know what I want, but I now know what I don't want. I know I don't want this again. I was fortunate enough to go through these bumps and bruises again to know that I don't want anything to do with this again. I ain't doing this again. Yeah. Those so, certain situations like, help you to learn and grow. Learn and grow. Yeah. No time to be down about them and yeah. Whine about them. Learn, grow, and move on. So Ian, this was great, man. It was great catching up with you and seeing you again. Next time you're in uh, Toronto, you gotta give me a shout so we can grab a coffee, grab a drink, whatever the case is. Thanks for coming on. Thanks for having me, Greg. And I'm really happy to see you pursuing your media venture, I guess, and into broadcast. And great show, man. Great line of questioning as well. All right. Thanks a lot, man. Peace. Cheers. And that brings us to the end of another episode of Toasted Soul. Thank you for listening and supporting Toasted Soul. Visit us at ToastedSoul.com to leave comments or book guest appearances and to get news on Toasted Soul. Please join us again next week. And as always, live with soul.